Okay. So having found the least flattering part of the hotel room, let's do some of the stuff that we did in the seminar today, from what I can remember. You probably already heard the story several times about how um, my peculiar encounter at the bar and then the Milwaukee Art Museum. If you haven't, ask me. It's a great story. Especially if you know the people involved. At the very least me. So anyway, what are some of the things we learned today? We had uh, Dr. G. Lick's premises. We had some premises. None of which I can remember right now because I forgot my notebook. Um, one of which was the mind needs to be in control of the body. People have to be responsible for their own healing. Uh, pain has a path. One needs to find out where this path is. And then you can work with it and around it because pain is very rarely just one place. Uh, and then also you have to work around the pain. So say somebody's got some sort of uh, muscular or something or other going on, a sprain, a bruise, or etc. And uh, you know, use an example like you know, something so not in the muscle. What you would need to do at that point is not necessarily work directly on this thing, but work above and below it. And then that would uh, kind of free up the area of how you do whatever it is you're doing because the other parts of the body are going to try to um, protect that particular part. So work around it to loosen those up and then you can get your stuff done. So Let's see, what did we start with? Um, a really interesting exercise that I asked Anderson about, and he had said that this is probably the basis of Gyoki. So this was kind of a light bulb moment for me, at the very least. So uh, what G had us doing was getting our breath involved with the healing as well. So we started out doing our favorite little prayer position, and we were going to, we were working off the idea that we were curing carpal tunnel, or working with carpal tunnel, G like to say you can fix 30%, guaranteed, probably not going to get 100%. Actually, he said you're not going to get 100%, but we're optimists here, right? probably not going to get 100%. You might, but you get at least 30%. So uh, the idea here was that you know, this is uh, coming up somewhere into the middle of your back, and that's actually where we're going to need to start working. So we did some breathing exercises, and the idea here is we're going to be trying to uh, get the pulse going and feel the pulse between ourselves. Uh, ourselves between our fingers and everything, so we get the breath going. This is pretty awesome when we did it. So the way the breath is going to work, and uh, we've seen this in some of the other exercises, breathing exercises as well. Holy fuck, it's after midnight. Uh, we should be at the club. Or if you heard the story from earlier, I should be cowering under the bed playing video games, but I forgot the iPad in the car. So we're going to breathe in, and uh, this breath is going to kind of come up our nose, do this thing, go through the back of our head, and as it comes down, it's going to branch off into each of our arms, through the shoulders, and then come out through the fingertips. Now, the way I had been doing it was breathing in, was sending this energy here, and then just breathing out was kind of coming out through the palms. One of the other things we learned a little bit later in the session was that we have uh, you know, nice fingers. If you're familiar with the uh, Malcolm McLaren song, the uh, Great Rock and Roll Swindle, You Need Hands. So we've got um, some power points in the hands. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, the palm's going to be the strongest. And uh, it's going to be important for touchy stuff that we do later. So basically the idea that I was working with, and this seemed to work pretty well because I got some interesting feelings, was you're going to breathe in, and then the energy or breath or whatever is going to come out here, go up into the fingertips. We're going to breathe all the way until we get into the fingertips. And then breathe out through the palms, so kind of uh, you know, in, out sort of thing, like we do with yoga. So, stood in our sitting actually for this drill, but uh, the hotel room's not really set up for me balancing my phone on a grocery bag. We'll do that until we start to um, feel this energy moving and everything else like that. And uh, blah, 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 blah. So once we get that done, we can start doing some of these uh, exercises that he had shown us. The first one was just going to be coming down and wiping. Now, something that we had, we've done this before, but something we hadn't done before was breathe in while we're doing this. And then as we get to the end, uh, we're going to breathe out. 
So uh, for whatever purpose that is, but be breathe in. And breathe out while we're throwing the stuff around. Uh, one of the other things that he talked about was how we get you know, the breath and the mind and the body and all this crap. Um, birth being the beginning of life, breath meaning life, death meaning the end of breath, however that works. Uh, but the other thing is we're going to have to integrate into one side with the other. So, uh, in this case, you know, we do our breathing, stuff's moving and flowing, etc. And the right works on the left, the left works on the right. It's something we're going to see a couple times later, and probably later this weekend as well. So, here we go. Um, yeah, so it was now all of our little power pointy things are going to be working here. Start at the shoulder as we're breathing in. We've got uh, the palm, the fingers, Mr. Thumb, all touching, going down. And we kind of alternated back and forth for some of these things, and then other things we did a number of times. I know sometimes the number times that we do things is a little bit different. 30 was a big number today. Hold uh, 30 wipes, or whatever these things are called. And I uh, you know, do 30 repetitions of this, that, or the other, or hold certain things, or a 30 count. So, I don't know, whatever that's all about. 30 is the number of the day. So first we'd do this. And then the next thing, because we were working with our um, uh, carpal tunnel was push, rotate, hopefully we can see this in the video, and then press, rotate, pull, push or something like that. So we come to the end of one finger, so this would be inhale, and of course we're doing it slower because it's Dr. G style, by the time you finish your breath you get to get to the end here, and then exhale. Next finger. And go all the way down that way. So we do that to each side. So that was the first one. We'd also do it to the legs. So we'd be sitting And then um, we had seen this before, uh, G showed the last time he was in Chicago, where you'd be kind of sitting down. When you come back, when you come down here, so you'd be sitting, got your spine flat, and etc. So that was the second thing. Next thing, it's a little bit more familiar. I'm going to work out the individual fingers. So I can't remember what order he did it in. I think it was this order. It was not quite the order we've done it in before. But this one is going to be kind of interesting. We're going to call it tree rooting. So if we start here, in our favorite prayer position, we get the pulse, which is what he was calling that breathing exercise we saw earlier. And uh, hopefully I zip my fly. Fold our knuckles down. Again. And as we breathe in, expand and breathe out, we're kind of pushing out. So we're actually massaging the various knuckles joints, etc. this way. So the And for this one it's important that we uh, keep the thumbs and stuff in. So we'll do this 30 times. Now he only showed one way. I asked Anderson if there was any benefit to doing you know, well, if you start with the left hand on top, do the right hand on top. Maybe maybe not. So we did this. The next thing we did was uh, something else that's familiar to us. We would start collapse uh, into this thing, not quite the thing we saw before. And what was the order here? So the first thing we did, keep the shoulders down. Melt your shoulders, as yoga people like to say. Keep this tight. Right, stretch the fingers out in such a manner. That'd be one coming up like such. And the next thing was coming out in front. After this, pushing our shoulders forward to do this. I think you might have had it up a little bit uh, closer by the face. And come back. 
it up like so, as much as we are able to, and then down. These are for 30 counts. Today was 30 day, remember? And fold back here. Last thing we've seen before, and it really worked well today. I don't know, maybe I'm just uh, having a weird day. Definitely having a weird day. So we start here, and then we do our favorite finger trick here. Now, here's a little bit of a difference than what we had done before. Don't know if this is necessary, but it's pretty cool. So whichever finger we're working on, uh, this time we alternate it. So we went pinky, pinky, ring finger, ring finger, Iranian salute, Iranian salute, etc. So when we would start from prayer position here, we would come and just those two fingers, which were going to be the ones we were working on, would maintain contact and come out and we do our thing. This we flexed 30 times this time. It made a huge freaking difference. It actually worked for me. Back to prayer, pinkies. Back to prayer, after 30 times of course, ring fingers. Ring fingers, middle finger, middle finger, uh, whatever these things are called. So that was that. Then uh, the last little thing he showed, which was kind of a non-standard sort of thing, but um, let's see, we had uh, this way, the wrist, this way with the wrist, I believe, then this way to rotate different direction, a different method. This was the Ed Cress way of doing it. I can't remember how he did it. Probably something like this. Um, so there's that. And there's one more thing, which I can't remember. But um, I'll probably remember one o'clock, just a half hour. So watching. That is the video. Oh, this is what Anderson showed me. Chris knows what in the world he was talking about, but I think it was the start of how he deals with carpal tunnel. So he'd uh, kind of go like this. So this is the hand we're going to work on. And we've got uh, this little thing comes in pause. And with our thumb pad, just right in here, just going to be like on the inside of uh, the bottom of the thumb thing. I forget what it's called. That meaty part, we can do this. I can switch. Actually, it feels quite nice. So, uh, that's the stuff. Crazy ex girlfriend stories. And, um, have fun.